welcome by Vintage Love. Today we are here in Connecticut with Dr. Colleen Darnell, better known as Vintage Egyptologist on Instagram and YouTube. And today we are going to do a 1920s daytime look and a 1920s evening look. I'm so excited to show you this, as is Narmer, our canine sidekick for the day. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get started. We're gonna get started on our everyday 20s makeup. And I'm gonna start out with powder, which is basically powder plus foundation, because back then they really didn't have foundation as we think of it today. The mm -hmm. only foundation options back then were grease paint, which would have been used during um, for theater and maybe a little on film. And then in 1914, Max Factor invented something called flexible grease paint because grease paint Normal grease paint was cracking on film and looked really, really bad. Um, so, But honestly, most women on a daily basis wouldn't have been using that. They mm -hmm. would have been using powder, which okay. had been around for forever, basically for millennial, <laughs> millennium. Um, but that, and they would have used that more or less as foundation. And it didn't really, oh, hey, number. Um, it didn't really have any coverage per se, but it would smooth out the skin a little bit um, and just, you know, give a nice overall complexion. So I'm just gonna load up a powder puff. I'm using um, T. Leclerc powder. So we're just gonna go in here. This is T. Leclerc powder in Camellia, I believe. At the beginning of, in the teens and early 20s, they didn't really have many color options for powder. That kind of happened more at the end of the 20s. So we weren't dealing the, as with almost every kind of makeup in this era, the color choices were pretty limited. Mm. <laughs> it wasn't like it was today where you can find every tone, every undertone, you know, all those things. We, we were very, very spoiled with our choices of makeup, which they just didn't have back then. The skin is basically done now. We're lucky because Colleen has lovely skin. Um, she doesn't need to cover up very much, if anything. Um, so this is basically what a powdered face would look like. So I'm gonna move on to the brows, which are of course, 20s brows are very iconic for the look. Basically the most important thing about a 20s look is to get the brow, brow shape right and the lip shape right and everything else is kind of like gravy on top of that, at least for the day look. Um, we're very lucky because Colleen's basic shape of Colleen's brows is very conducive to a 20s look. Um, and we're just kind of gonna fill in the brow that she has. 20s brows were we're thin in general. Um, the shape of a 20s brow is not as codified as a 30s brow. A 30s brow was super high arch. Think Jean Harlow, think Marlena Dietrich. A 20s brow, because they were kind of playing around with the shape and product and things like that, you get you have a little more leeway of what is considered a 20s brow in terms of shape. Um, if you look at pictures of Louise Brooks, it's basically a straight line, straight line down. Um, Paula Negri, you know, again, a straight line. Clara Bow, a little bit more of an arch, but very, very low. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we, in our modern eyes, have a very hard time with because we want every, A, we want the brows to be thick and full, which they were not back then. Um, they were very thin, and also they're very down. That's a, that's a shape that we see in 20s makeup, is the brows are down, the eye shape is down, and um, in our 2020 minds, that's very, I think that's hard for a lot of people to, to accept. <laughs> um, so when I see, when you um, Google you know, flapper makeup, you see these makeups and it's all like very, very, you know, pulled up, pulled up, pulled up, and that's not what the shape was. Um, and also I'll see sometimes when people are doing a, a 20s makeup, um, they will block out their own brow or cover their brow and then draw a thin 20s brow above their brow if you're doing for a true 20s, that's actually not what you want to do. You really want to make um, you want to make it very low. So if you take Clara Bow as an example, there's I mean her her brow would be like down here. So you really want to keep a very low, downturned brow. The next thing is I'm going to do a lash curler. Lash curlers were actually invented in 1923. Um, I don't actually know how commonly used they would have been back in the day. I certainly don't think a lot of women were using them at home. Um, I think they probably would have been more of like a used on set kind of thing. Okay. Um, and I don't actually, this is, this is a modern day curler. This is a Troy Seurat curler, amazing lash curler. I'm actually not sure what a lash curler would have looked like back then. I was not able to find a picture of one. Um, so I don't know how close it would have been to this design, but I'd, I'd love to find out.
Um, so next I'm going to be adding a little bit of liner to the top lashes. Um, this is less to be like a true like line line and more just to give the effect of a thicker lash once the mascara is on, which is a trick I still use today. Um, this is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in black. It's a really good pencil because it smudges easily, but it stays pretty well too. So I really like that. They also, they basically had black and brown eye pencils back then. So um, you could very easily use a brown pencil for this because Colleen has this beautiful black hair. I feel comfortable using a black one, um, but brown is also an option. These are basically the only eyebrow and, and um, eye, eye pencil colors. So there you go. Um, so I'm gonna go in to smudge that out. I'm gonna use a little pencil brush. This is from Hakahoto. Very fancy line. You don't have to use a line that, that is that fancy, but it's nice to have it. And we're trying to keep the daytime look definitely on the more subtle side because we're really gonna go for it with the um, evening flapper look. So trying to keep it, trying to keep this one real. <laughs> so <laughs> open your eyes for me. And I think it's, it's important to remember that not everyone was walking around the full flapper, vamp, smoky eye look every day. I mean, it, was, it did happen, but I think that was more in the film world, for the magazines, for things like that. Um, and there, certainly there was natural makeup too. In the movies, there's pictures of Max Factor making up actresses with lovely natural makeup. So that's kind of what we're trying to emulate with this look. I'm gonna move on to just put a tiny bit of eyeshadow. Eyeshadows back then were pretty limited in color. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of color, but generally it was black, brown, blue, or green. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know if there was any other colors happening in the 20s, but that's the only evidence I could find. So I'm just gonna to stick to a, a brown eyeshadow. So this is the Visart, this is the Visart Grand Pro, pa Grand Pro palette. It's a wonderful palette to have. Um, so I'm just gonna go with this Good basic brown color there. We're just gonna smudge out that lash line just a little bit more. Go a little. So we're smudging that in. And I think the average one would probably just be using her finger to do most of this, but I just wanted to, this is kind of like a, this look is kind of a balance between what an average woman would have done and what like a natural makeup that would have been used on set to a certain extent. Hmm. Um, I didn't want to go too far in either direction, um, but there's lots of pictures of Max Factor doing like a lovely natural makeup on a star. Because as we just noted, not everyone was walking around in full vamp makeup all the time. And I think, um, I think what most women would have been wearing on a daily basis is closer to powder, maybe a little brow pencil and lipstick, hmm. or maybe just powder lipstick. I think that's what the average woman would have been wearing at that time. Um, this probably would have been even more of an evening look for uh, an average lady, not in the city, I think. Close. But I think that's why it's always interesting to kind of do the research on these things and see like, this is what they were wearing in fashion and movies. This is what they were advertising, and this is what the average woman was wearing. I think there's always this, that differentiation between those things that we we kind of forget. You know, the farther away it is, the more we kind of like to romanticize what people were doing. But you know, even nowadays, it's like not everyone's walking around with a full, you know, a full beat every day, <laughs> <laughs> despite what Instagram and advertising would have us believe. Um, that's not what that's not what's happening. Um, okay, so the next thing is mascara. Um, back then, they really only had cake mascara. Cake mascara was invented, I wanna say it was in the, in the early, in the teens actually, um, and it was affectionately known as spit cake um, because <laughs> <laughs> they used to spit into it. Uh, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> um, you should use water. Uh, this is the, uh, the Besame cake mascara. And yeah. They use their lipsticks all the time. Yeah. Oh, it's great. They have beautiful, beautiful product. And blush. And blush. Yeah. No, it's awesome stuff. And I'm, I'm so glad that they make uh, cake mascara. It's such a cool thing to use. Um, not something you really see around anymore. And I had heard this great story, uh, a much older lady was saying how in the 1940s during World War II, when they heard that the soldiers were coming, you'd hear all the girls spitting into their, their spit cake to get, the, to get it going. Um, <laughs> so on that note, um, 
This is the Besame one. It comes with this little tiny brush and the cake of mascara in there. And because if you think about spinning into your, your, your <laughs> mascara, um, you don't need that much water to activate this. Mm -hmm. If you think about the cons consistency of mascara in a tube, it's very thick. So you don't want it to be, you don't want a lot of water. You want just a tiny, tiny little bit. When I'm doing mascara, I like to concentrate the bulk of the color at the root of the lash and then pull out the color to the tips of the lash. This will make the base of the lash look thicker. And then after that's done, pull, pull a spoolie or a lash comb through to avoid any clumps. So next we're gonna move on to blush. Um, blush was rouge, as it's also known as, was another cosmetic along with powder that's been around for centuries. Mm -hmm. um, and was a very important part of ladies' routine for you know, centuries. Again, um, this is a this is a 1920s compact. It has actual blush and powder in it. So that's the powder up there, and then this is the blush. So you see how vibrant, vibrantly colored it's an that is. Amazing color. It's such a pretty. I'd say that raspberry pink, um, and I love that. I think. Again, we, we kind of think of everything, of everything as being black and white back then. And it was there was so much color going on, especially with the, the reds. And also, as I was saying before, because it was the infancy of modern cosmetics, they didn't have the subtlety that we have now for the colors and everything. So the colors were very strong. I mean, mm -hmm. you basically had, you know, raspberry red, you know, pinks and reds and oranges and very intense, bright colors. So that's why you see in the advertisements, the bright, bright on the pink, on the, the, the bright, bright colors on the cheeks and, you know, the intensity of the color and the lips and everything because they didn't have the silicones and everything that they have now and do the that. fashion, the colors in the dresses. Oh my gosh, yeah. Absolutely the same color. There absolutely. are some greens that you yeah. wouldn't think you could make. Yeah, it's almost it, like acid greens, right? Exactly, yeah. the vibrancy yeah. of the pink and the red and yes. the orange. Yes, So I feel like in some ways the cosmetics were mimicking yeah, a lot well, of the for colors sure. in the dresses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, like what was happening before that? It was all World War One, and you know, whites and navies and more drab colors. All this technology happened, and they were able to produce all these colors that mm -hmm. had never been seen before. Um, and that must have been very, very exciting to go from kind of these very staid drab colors to so much color and and a new silhouette and everything. Like you think about the difference in the silhouette and everything, in just between like. 1908 and then 1918 and 1918 to 1928. Like 1908 to 1928 must have been a huge, it just it boggles <laughs> the mind how much of a change that was. And for the technology and the cosmetics to come yeah. about just at the right time when you have the social changes mm -hmm. that then make the wearing of cosmetics acceptable. Absolutely, absolutely. And then World War One making that happen as well. Um, it's really it's really fascinating how that all ties together because nothing happens in a vacuum, as we said before. Um, this just wasn't, was, wasn't all happening for no reason. It was happening because of everything happening around it. Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, the placement of color is very important for decade, for period looks. Um, the color in the 20s was really more about what was like on the apple of the cheeks. Hmm. Um, and because of that, I'm gonna use this, and we'll get to see how nicely pigmented this still is after all this time. That's really fabulous to be using yeah. century-old makeup. <laughs> yes. Don't do this at home, please, especially if you find a cream product. Like, powder is slightly safer because bacteria doesn't grow in dry climate, but this is not going to be on Colleen's face very long. I've tested on myself. So please, 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 if you do collect vintage makeup, be careful. <laughs> um, you know, don't use it on yourself liberally. Spray it down with some alcohol. Like, just be careful. <laughs> It was not acceptable for women to be seen for certainly putting on makeup in public and even be perceived as wearing makeup at all for quite a few, certainly through the Victorian era. It was, you know, you were, you could wear makeup very, very, very discreetly. Um, and the 20s were a time when that all changed. And that's when you see, that's why you see these beautiful compacts happening, being manufactured. Okay, so we have a little, little color on the cheeks there. Another thing to think about, just makeup in general, if you're trying to achieve a round shape, you want a round brush. Hmm. Um, this is the Smith 112 brush, which is a beautiful, great brush. This entire line of brushes is amazing. I love Smith brushes. So that's something to think about when you're thinking about the shape you're trying to create and then choose the appropriate brush to create that shape.
So last but certainly not least, we're going to do some lips. And lips is another area I think that 20s makeup people kind of, they go a little too far in the in the area of what they think it was versus mm -hmm. what it really was. Um, we kind of think of it as being this little itty bitty tiny mouth in the middle. That that happened, um, but for the most part, women were just drawing their lips slightly smaller than they actually were. So you, yeah, you'll very rarely see that kind of like, you know, the the finger, you know, the, the thumb width mouth. It was generally mm -hmm. just a much smaller mouth. Colleen luckily has a nearly perfect <laughs> lip shape for 20s, which is why she always looks so great in 20s. Her brows and her lips are basically ready to go 20s shapes. Well, thank um, you. Yes, which makes my job very easy. Um, it's out of my control. <laughs> yeah. Some people just have, you know, that, that look. Um, I, yeah, it's funny because my, my eyes are naturally downturned, but I hate 20s makeup myself because <laughs> I don't like to accentuate the downturn of my eyes and my lips are naturally wide, so I want to make them smaller. I just, I, <laughs> So the 1920s lip shape is much smaller than we're used to. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing that is hard for modern eyes, um, the downward shape of the brows and the eyes and then the smallness of the mouth because nowadays we just want our lips to be... Full, full, full. <laughs> that is not what they had back then. Um, so I think that's something to, to get your mind around if you're trying to create a real 20s look is mm -hmm. you're going to have to kind of get out of your own comfort zone of what, what we perceive to be attractive now. <laughs> I think that's perfect, though, with yeah. cosmetics, makeup, as well as fashion is mm. that, one, you don't have to be exactly true to the decade. Yeah. And two, you can take whatever features you have mm -hmm. and find a decade that matches them. Absolutely. So if you have smaller lips go with the 1920s if you yeah. have downturned eyes. What, yeah. what features, facial features, do you think would be perfect for 40s and 50s? Um, I think a fuller mouth, for sure, for 40s and 50s, mm -hmm. um, because that was when they started to really like overdraw the lips. Um, and also the big eye, big like upturned eyes, actually, because that the 50s was when they started to do a liner. Um, and that kind of the doe-eyed and a, a heavy brow. They loved a thick, heavy brow in the 50s. Um, so yeah, like a, that super dramatic arch. Um, so that would be good for 40s, 50s. But yeah, it's it's fascinating to look at face facial features and figure out what decade be looks best in each one. And you know, body type too. You know, you're beautiful and lithe and long and lean, so 20s looks amazing. And me, I have a small waist and larger hips, so if I were 20s, I look like a sack. It's not cute. <laughs> um, hello, this is Narmer. I just got my Narmer. Hello, Narmer, how you doing? How you doing, buddy? He loves lipstick, we found out earlier. He does. He does, yeah, he's a lipstick dog. He's, he's, he's ready. Yep, he's ready. You good, bud? Okay, let's do it. Um, okay, so we're gonna use, uh, red was basically the color of the 20s, as I was saying mm -hmm. before. There was not a, a wide range of of colors like we have now. We're gonna do a darker <laughs> lip later, but for now we're gonna to stick to um, Femme Noir by Julie Hewitt, which is a lovely line. Uh, Julie Hewitt is also a line that loves old Hollywood colors, and mm. she has a beautiful line of reds um, based off of, uh, based around Hollywood stars and the colors that they were using back then. So if you like that kind of thing, that's a good line as well. I'm gonna go ahead and create the shape using a lip brush. This is, again, a Hakuhodo brush. You can use any lip brush or do straight from the tube. I personally find that using a lip brush just gives me more control, mm -hmm. which is what you want. Okay, so a good way to do this is just kind of do a little crisscross here. Um, so because Colleen's lips are already a great 20s shape, I don't need to worry about changing them too much. Um, if you have a, a wider lip or a thicker lip or a fuller lip, what's good to do is to go over your lip with um, concealer first so you can blot out the natural shape and then you can kind of create the shape that you want. So when I do a 20s look on myself, I definitely have to bring in the, the corners of my mouth quite a bit because I have a, a longer, wider mouth. Um, and I'm giving her a tiny bit more of a cupid's bow. And then I'm just gonna kind of, I just want, I want the color to be very focused in the center of the mouth and then kind of very gently. So this is a new clean brush and I'm just taking the lipstick that's already there and just blending it out to the corners so the bulk of the color will be in the center of the mouth. And you can do a hard line at the edge of the color here to get that truly kind of the true very, very tiny mouth, but I think this is a little more flattering and a little more realistic to what they would have done. 
and this is our 1920s daytime look. So we just completed Colleen's daytime 20s look and we're going to move on to the evening 20s look now, the flapper or the vamp look that we very often associate with 20s makeup. Um, so Colleen has on this amazing dress. <laughs> As I mentioned, just everything she wears is amazing. Um, thank you, Michelle. <laughs> they use Iris Apple's wardrobe as a Met exhibition, and they should do that with your clothing too, because it is amazing. Um, anyways, so I love seeing you all dressed up, especially in the evening wear. And do you do you like to, you kind of amp up your makeup for evening wear as, as well? I do try to, yes. So yeah. when I'm doing a normal daytime look, keeping it a little bit more subtle yeah. like we did mm -hmm. in in our daytime yes uh what i'm wearing right now yeah but a little bit darker eyeshadow mm -hmm. darker lips so it'd be yeah. really great to get yeah. skinny on mm -hmm. yeah what is accurate in yes. terms of true 1920s evening makeup yes um so i'm going to show you how to do that and it's actually not super different because what we ha we have like the foundation, we have the powder that we've used, used as foundation, and we have a little bit of blush on, and already have the eyebrows drawn on. And so what we're gonna do is we're, like you said, we're gonna amp up the, the eyes, we're gonna give you a smoky eye, and do a nice deep, uh, dark, dark mouth to really like, really give it that look. And as I said before, as I was saying during the, um, the day look, it's all about the shapes. So when I do the smoky eye, you're gonna see that like downturned shape. And because your eyes actually naturally have that shape, again, perfect 20s face here, it's, it's gonna make it quite easy to do that. Um, so let's get started. And as I mentioned before with eyeshadow, they, there were pretty limited color options back in the day. So um, we're looking at, it was basically like brown, black, and then they also had blues and greens, turquoise and green actually. So I don't have it all in one palette, but you can get a, kind of get a sense of like, this would have been these, these blues here, and then this world of these greens. Um, this is the Visart Editorial Pro Palette, if in case you're wondering, great palette to have if you like brights. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the same black pencil that I used before. This is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil. Great everyday pencil. Colleen and I were talking before this about how it's sometimes hard to find a good pencil that will smudge nicely, but also stay pretty well. This is really nice. It smudges nicely, and if you lay an eyeshadow over it, it will stay pretty well. Um, so let's, let's go. So I'm going to go back over the line here. And you don't need to worry about this line being too perfect or anything because we're just going to smudge it up anyways. So we're just going in the waterline here because we really want that super, super smoky effect. And there's nothing like putting pencil in a water line that'll really, you know, you know where you see like her eyes are, are popping. And I'm just gonna go kind of in the, in the lash line here. The makeup of the 20s was not kind of perfect like the makeup is now. You can really see in, you know, the, the close-up tight beauty shots of these, of these make, of these um, stars that their makeup was pretty rough actually, um, partly because of the formulation and partly because modern makeup was in its infancy and, you know, just a lot of different reasons. So there's no reason to not kind of, you know, make your makeup as perfect as you can, but it just, I think it's kind of interesting, an interesting thing to note when doing the research and things like that. I think it's interesting to think about, you know, the flappers too, the true, you know, young women that were out there wearing this makeup and dancing in it and sweating and you know how much was the makeup moving and what did they look like by the end of the night and all those kind of things. So I'm getting in here with this little pencil brush again and I'm just going to smudge that out. All right, so we have a good start on a smoky eye right there. Um, honestly, you could just leave it here if you wanted to. <laughs> um, look up for me, but we're gonna, since we're here, we're gonna go for it. Um, I also really like the idea of converting the day look to the evening look, mm -hmm. because I feel like when it's time to go out again, there's always gonna be the time. 
to yeah. transition over. So yeah, the yeah. idea of transforming day into evening. Absolutely. You know, it's still a thing today. Like, oh, I'm going to go out to drinks with my friends. Like, what do I need to do to change my look? And this is it. Sometimes all you need to do is just take a pencil and rim your eye with it and you're good to go, honestly. Um, but yeah, I love that idea too of, of transitioning it. It's, it's one of those things that is it true today as it was back then. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and use black eyeshadow because again, we're, we're just going to go for it. And as I mentioned before, the look and the feel of this decade is down. The, the shape of this decade hmm. is down, down, down. You don't want it to be up, it's down. Any picture that you look at from this time period, and I can almost say that with a 100% across the board, any picture you look at from this time period, makeup wise, is going to be a downward shape. And I feel like Hollywood glamour makeup, that's also true in the 1930s, at least with eyeshadow. Um, yes, and the eyeliner too. Actually, if you look at Greta Garbo's um, eyeliner, it was all a down shape as well. Hmm. Um, yeah, through the basically the 20s and 30s, 20s to an extreme example, but the 30s also, it was very much a downward shape as well. It's actually fascinating to look at Greta Garbo's makeup because if you never have, I highly recommend it because she really was the precursor of Twiggy's makeup. She had, you know, the, the extremely, you know, a line in her crease, oh. it was down, and then she would create a little um, triangle at the edge to bring it down even more. It's super interesting. I love her eye makeup. And again, not a look for everyone, but on her, it worked out beautifully. I think we were saying this before, if you really want to get a sense of the changing shapes and fashion of makeup and hair, um, look at pictures of look at pictures of stars that were around for a long time. Look at pictures of Joan Crawford. Um, Betty Davis is another really good mm -hmm. one because um, they had careers. She so much over the so decades. <laughs> look at look at pictures of them from nineteen teens or early twenties through the fifties. It will blow your mind. It is it is. I also love when they appear in historic mm. movies. Oh my gosh, my favorite. And that Betty Davis in particular was willing to go to extremes to represent, for example, Elizabeth I mm -hmm. in a way that was definitely not according to beauty standards no. when the movie was made. Right. But she had that commitment, and you see that a lot in the makeup and hair. Yeah. Who was willing to take those risks, who mm -hmm. was willing to step outside. Yeah. of the okay. contemporary mm -hmm. comfort zone or beauty yeah. zone, yeah. as the case may be. Exactly. Or And also, like, who who wasn't, you know, to, you know, <laughs> to the extent where, like, yeah, like, um, Norma Shearer in, in Marie, Anto the Marie Antoinette movie is so beautiful, but, like, yeah, that's not what they would have been doing back then. And, and lots of other ones, too. Like, I think even, I think there's, like, a Little Women that's super, like, not, not of that era. Um, you know, but it's it is really interesting yeah, to see who was willing to go for it and who wasn't. Although even as I'm saying that, I'm realizing that it also wasn't entirely up to them because of the studio right. system. Oh, absolutely. So big, uh, big caveat there. Yeah. Open for me. So as I said, Colleen's eye shape is perfect for this because it is kind of like that, or it has like a downward um, slope to it. But you can see, uh, look straight ahead from me, Colleen. Um, I'm really just following that the shape of her natural eye, I'm not trying to bring it up at all. Don't be afraid to kind of go in the corner a little bit. I'm using a small brush for this. A small blending brush. If you have a larger eye shape or you want a little fluffier, that is fine too. And then they did have cream shadows back then too, but I think they were hmm. a little more rare. There's an amazing, there's an amazing picture of like a little tiny beauty box or a compact that someone had, and it has like cream bright blue eyeshadow and cream bright green eyeshadow, and I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> I would love to get my hands on that. So what I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and do um, 
I'm going to do a little green over this just for the heck of it. Okay. Because I feel like this is like a gold green you have going on here. Mm -hmm. And I just want to like have a little fun and get a sense of like what a little, a little bit of color would look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this lovely, this lovely jade color almost here. So I'm just going to tap a little bit of that green just in the center of the lid. I think the flappers had fun there with their makeup, so why not us? <laughs> Close. I'm just gonna blend that out. It's gonna be kind of a subtle, as subtle as we can be with a smoky eye. Yeah, it's subtle, but it's really pretty. I like the way that that's looking. I wish you do a little bit underneath too. Look up. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna um, speed through the other eye. So Colleen's smoky eye is done, as you can see. I think it looks beautiful. I love the little bit of green in there, and I think it really, your eyes are just popping and look amazing. <laughs> um, so we already have mascara on from the daytime look. So I did, when I was in my, doing my research, I discovered that, the, that false lashes were being used um, in the 20s, around 1921, you could get them in salons and they were being, being used on movie sets. And in 1923, uh, there was a patent for a, to make, um, a, there was a patent for a machine that made false lashes that were better and thinner and lasted longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some lashes. These are obviously not from the 1920s, um, but these are um, 747 shorts. If you wanna look that up online, they're very easy to find. They're actually a great everyday Lash. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and pop these on Colleen really quickly. Does that feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I've already cut down the, one of the outer corners of these lashes before mm -hmm. we rolled this. Um, that is actually a very important thing to do. Sometimes the lash is the right length for your eye, but a lot of the times it's too long. Um, very, very common. So. A, a tip is to, before you put any glue on it, hold it up to your eye and see if you need to trim off any of the end of it. Um, very often that needs to be done. And if you don't do that and the lash is too long for your eye, then you'll get poked in the eye and it's really uncomfortable. Um, I'm sure we've all had lashes on that are really uncomfortable and it's miserable. <laughs> And this is definitely something that I, I don't think the average woman would have been wearing false lashes, but mm -hmm. you know, just to round out this beautiful look and get a sense of what it would look like maybe on film. We're gonna do it. And I just love false lashes, period, so. Um, so I wanna um, pop the, the bottom lashes on Colleen a little bit more. So even though she has mascara on, I'm gonna go ahead and put some, some more cake mascara on the bottom. You feel okay? Mm -hmm. Lashes feel good? Okay. That's another thing about false lashes, especially especially with if you're using the strips like this, like you really shouldn't feel them. If you do it right and you the positioning is right and the length is right and everything, you shouldn't feel them on your on you at all. Because if anything that's slightly uncomfortable when you first put them on is gonna absolutely be agony after a few hours. Mm. It's kinda like when you wear shoes and the first ten minutes you're like, it only hurts a little bit, and then after <laughs> two hours you're like I want to die. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. So we're going to go back in with the um, with the cake mascara like we did earlier. 
And I think they really, they really did love their mascara back then. Like you can see they in the ads. Did. Yeah. <laughs> you can see and there's a great Maybelline ad where it's like every single, every single, um, Every single lash is, you can cl they clearly like drew it out for a mascara ad and it's just amazing. You said you do, you do have cake mascara that you use or you, you tend to use just the regular cake I have mascara. purchased it. You've purchased I have not it. refined. Okay. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. <It's used. laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have not yet become proficient with that brush. Yeah, it's, it's. It's not the easiest brush to use, in all honesty. Um, but it's a replica of yeah. something that they had at the time. Absolutely. I mean, this was the mascara brush that they used for de decades. I mean, basically all wow. the, the entire time they were using cake mascara, this is the brush they were using. I feel like if I wear 19... I feel like since I wear 1920s mm -hmm. dresses, I need to learn how to use one of those brushes <laughs> properly. It, it, it's, you definitely can. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, like if we were doing, if I was doing a modern interpretation of a twenties look on you, I would just, I would be using regular mascara, modern mascara. I would be using a spoolie to do this, which is also fine. Um, it's really, it's, it's just all about having fun. So smoky eyes done. We have the lashes on. We put a little mascara on the bottom, and now I'm going to take off the red lip that we had for the daytime look and add a nice deep dark. Plum? I'm not even sure. It's basically like it would have filmed as basically black on camera. And again, we're going to stick with that very, the very small lip shape, which is basically Colleen's amazing lip shape. I love how vintage gives us paradigms for beauty mm -hmm. that work for everyone. Yeah. Exactly. Rather than trying to conform to a modern beauty standard, you can just mm -hmm. pick a decade where yeah. that feature works and yes. say, I am beautiful in a 1920s way or I'm beautiful yeah. in a 1940s way. Yeah, I love that, you know, because we have this, we get caught in that ideal or that paradigm of what is and is not beautiful. And I think it's great to, to find what really works for us and what resonates with us too. Mm -hmm. And I also think that, I think if, if dressing vintage has taught me nothing else, it's that when you do what you love and you live your truth, it allows other people to do the same because they see you doing that and living kind of outside the norm of what is considered normal. That's re that's redundant, but you know what I mean? And it's like, I love it when we're dressed in vintage and younger younger girls come up to us and say, oh, I want to do that. And well, you should do that. You know, this is do whatever you makes you happy. That's really what it comes down to. So I think when you are living what works best for you, then it allows other people to do the same which is a great thing. So I'm gonna do a nice dark lip. This is Diva by MAC, which is a classic um, and so appropriate for this uh, time period. <laughs> All these divas. Are you calling me a diva? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Never. I'm not um, sure I would argue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So again, I'm gonna use a brush with this. You can by all means put it on straight from the tube, no problem at all. I just like a brush because it gives a little bit more control, especially if you're dealing with a dark color like this. So I already kind of have that shape earlier. I don't even want to go a little deeper than this is, this color is giving us, so I'm going to pull out um, Mac. Macanemi, Macanemi by um, by Pat McGrath Labs by PMG Labs. This is a super dark color. I just want to give a little more oof to what we got going on here. And again, I'm giving. Colleen's cupid bow a little bit more shape, a little bit more of an arch in the cupid's bow area. I'm just going to center all of the color in the middle. There we go. This is 
such a different look than the, <laughs> we just did a shoot at the Cheetah Bay Hotel where we were doing, I was doing a Twiggy look on uh, Colleen, and this is a much different look. <laughs> Speaking of transforming yourself with makeup. No, after, after I had the Twiggy yeah. eye makeup on and that whole look you crafted, it, it did not look like me during much of the shoot. Whenever oh, I would see myself in a reflective surface. Yeah, and I did the whole makeup and then you, how was it to look in the mirror after I had done the makeup? Was it just like, oh my gosh. It was shocking. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah, good. Because it's always so much fun to do, like, big makeup, some people that appreciate them, you know? And it's especially crazy if you don't see it, because it's such an involved makeup. Mm -hmm. This one, too, is. I think you'll probably be, hopefully, happily surprised when you see yourself. So I'm just very gently blending out these edges here. You want it to be a small mouth, but still a believable mouth. Yeah, there we go. And what I'm actually just going to go in there... I've already done the brows, but I'm just going to darken up the brow a little bit more because there's so much going on with the eyes and the lips. I just want to make sure that the eyebrows are oomph. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to go over the shape that we had before. Super thin. As I mentioned, Colleen's brows are perfect on these brows. And also, like your, your brows are actually quite light, so you could, if we did a 30s or 40s look, it would be super easy to to change your brows. Okay, and that is the 1920s evening flapper vamp look on the gorgeous, wonderful, talented Dr. Colleen Darnell, Thank also you. known as Vintage Egyptologist <laughs> on Instagram and YouTube. Please follow her if you do not already. She's amazing. You will learn so, so much. I am Michelle Corsi. I am My Vintage Love blog on Instagram and Please subscribe if you haven't below. We do updates a lot more on there. And subscribe below if you haven't already. And thank you so, so much, Colleen, for doing this. I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. This has been great. great. And I know one of the things I'm going to do is watch this video over <laughs> and over and over again <laughs> until I perfect the technique. I, I don't think I will ever quite get to that level. <laughs> but at least I can try it and I have some place to go. I mean, yes. how, how awesome is it to have a makeup tutorial on yourself that you can rewatch. Yeah, that's, I mean, it doesn't I'm get much better than that, right? That. <laughs> well, I was so lucky because I got to do it on your beautiful 20s face, and I said this 10 times during this video, but like the perfect 20s face, and it, it makes my job Thank very you. easy. <laughs> um, but you look beautiful. I wish you had somewhere to go tonight, but <laughs> Charleston in your living room, they'll have a great time. And thank you again so much for letting us come here to your refill house and do this. We had a, an amazing time. It was thank great. You. We'll see you at the next one. Please follow and bye.